Warm welcome to worship this morning. As the service goes on today, you'll notice that we don't have Fiona, our probationer, with us. Fiona is taking a well-deserved holiday. We have to remember that as well as the church work that Fiona does, she also has a day job too. She works as an accountant. She's been very, very busy. So we wish Fiona a happy holiday. It's not quite the Caribbean that she expected. It's probably more like walks around a very wet Chatelot Park. But hey, a holiday's a holiday, isn't it? We wish her a good holiday and a good rest. And so in the meantime, we worship together as the people of God and we sing, O God, you search me and you know me. things I love about the old parish church in East Kilbride is the sense of history that we share. The church building itself was built in 1776 which is obviously a long long time ago but as we've been saying over the last weeks it's not the building that's important it's the people and as you think over the years about the people who have served in that church there's thousands thousands of years of service diligent service. 
And too often we get a chance to say thank you to people when they pass away and we do the funeral. And I often say at funerals of stalwart church members, this church wouldn't be the same without people like you who have worked over the centuries to make it what it is. But you know, sometimes we don't need to wait until people have gone until we express our gratitude for what they have done. Anyone who serves in the church does it not for their own glory. They do it for the glory of God. But sometimes it's nice to just mark certain phases in people's life and give thanks for their service to the church. Now, before this lockdown period began, we had planned a presentation to our outgoing session clerk. He had served for six and a half years and he was stepping back for someone else to take the reins. And we'd planned a presentation for him in the church. Obviously, that hasn't happened. And we bought him a gift and the gift was lying and it was gathering dust. But coming up very soon, it's going to be the 60th anniversary of the ordination of one of our elders. Yep, listen to that, I said 60. This person was ordained in the East Kilbride Old Parish Church 60 years ago and has served in the eldership of the church for 60 years. So we had to mark that occasion as well. So we came up with a cunning plan. The plan was that the session clerk was going to be told that he was going to make the presentation to the elder. But the elder was told that he was going to be making the presentation to the session clerk and neither of them knew that a presentation was going to be given to each of them. So what we did was we staged an event and the film of it was shown at our Kirk Session meeting on Wednesday night. I'll just let you watch the film from the Kirk Session meeting on Wednesday night. Moderator and fellow elders, I think we all know that one of our colleagues, Angus, has been a member of our KIPP session for a remarkable 60 years. And that we decided a few weeks ago that we would celebrate this outstanding achievement. We also need to record our appreciation of years of service by Jim Ballantyne as our session clerk. Now, normally we would make these presentations at our usual Sunday morning service. But as we all know, we can't do that at the moment. So we come up with another way to show our appreciation to Angus and Jim. We have a short video filmed just a few mornings ago at Angus's home. So let's watch the video and see what happens. and the congregation we present you with a small gift with a token of appreciation of all the service you gave to the Kirk mm. as your session clerk. It had its ups and downs, its goods and its bads, but you survived it for six and a half years. And thank you very much for your efforts. Thank you. Yay! And thank you. That's all. Is it raining? This is Angus being caught by surprise. 
And this is a scroll that we presented to Angus on behalf of the session, recognising his 60 years of continuous service. We also gave Angus a voucher to dine at the Cross Basket Castle Hotel and a cheque, although Des just contacted me before the meeting tonight and he's telling me that the donations to Angus's fund keep going up, so I need to write yet another cheque. And this is Jim's turn to be surprised. It's a nice watercolour of the, of the church with an appropriate inscription. And there's Anne with our two veteran colleagues holding their presentation painting and scroll. And of course the new session clerk, he's got to get in and act as well. Moderator, fellow elders, although this is a virtual cup session, I think it would still be appropriate for us to collectively show our appreciation of the commitment, support and fellowship of our two colleagues in the usual manner with a round of applause. Thank you, Alistair. Now, at this point, there's got to be a right to reply. So, does Angus want to say something? Yes. I would mind saying a few words. If that's all right. Yes, of course it is. Why then? Just to express my thanks to my fellow elders and yourself uh, for their generosity in, in recognising 60 years in the old parish. I was born and born and brought up in the old parish, and uh, it has been delightful that you recognise that particular service of 60 years, uh, which I would do again if I was allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> However, may I wish. <laughs> you, ma'am, and uh, the, the rest of the elders, the very best in the talent and the talents that they have to be used for the advantage of the church over the next 60 years. I wish them good luck in doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Hey, Jim, do you want to say something now? Um, just, just, just to add to some things that Angus said. I, mean, I want to say that um, I didn't realise I had been session clerk for six and a half years um, because I must admit, on the whole, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I would recommend the position to anyone else. You know? um, but during the six and a half years, I don't think I quite managed to embarrass people, anybody, as much as Angus and I got embarrassed on Monday. So thank you very much, to everybody. <laughs> thank you all for your cooperation over the years. Because without that, the job would be impossible. Thank you very much indeed. Jesus said, Well done, you are a good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I'll put you in charge of much. Come and celebrate with me. We celebrate these milestones in people's lives. We give thanks to God for the people who have gone before us, who have kept the faith and have kept running the race in Jesus' name. So let's come to him in prayer now. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for our church. We thank you for everything that has been achieved, the work and the witness of those who have gone before us, the vision that sustained them, the faith that inspired them, and we thank you for the part that you call us to play in our church's continuing story. We thank you for the fellowship we share in Christ. We thank you for the support and encouragement, the strength and inspiration, the fun and friendship which come through being part of this church family. But as we face the future, we thank you for the possibilities that stretch before us, the avenues of service that are still waiting to be explored, the lives waiting to be touched by the message of the gospel and we thank you for the gifts that you have given us so that we might grasp these opportunities. So we pray then for one another, everyone who worships with us regularly, those who serve in positions of leadership and those who also work behind the scenes. 
deepen our commitment to you, to one another and to the world beyond. So loving God, we commit ourselves afresh to Jesus Christ and to his service within our church. Give us faith and courage, a spirit of adventure and a willingness to follow where you would lead. So hear us now as we pray together in the words Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. But lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. And now our readings are going to be read for us by Jim and Connie. The reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 28 to 39. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. More than conquerors. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give, all, give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Today's readings come from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 44 to 52. The parables of the hidden treasure and the peril. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. The Parable of the Net once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. And now we sing, Lord, you sometimes speak in wonders.
wonder if the last few months have made us realise just what it is that we value in life. So let me ask you a question this morning. What's valuable to you? This week I was fortunate to have my first hairdresser's appointment since the lockdown period. And there's been a lot of talk in the media about how hairdressers and other services too are putting up their prices to try and recoup back some of the losses. And when I came back from the hairdressers, my husband said to me, so have they put up the prices? And my answer was, I've no idea, because I just paid whatever it was that they were going to ask me to pay. I didn't even look at how much it cost, because that haircut, let me tell you, was pretty valuable to me. What's valuable to you? I wonder if it's health, it's family, it's friends, it's the simple things that we do that we value more than ever right now. And I think sadly many of us don't appreciate the really important things in life until we're in danger of losing them. But you know, there are some things that are priceless, though we don't realise their worth at the time. It's said that when Joseph Hayden worked for years as a composer for a certain Prince Paul in Germany, the prince's advisers kept saying that the money could be better spent on armies or the money could be better spent on weapons. What good was music, they said. What good, indeed. Prince Paul has long been forgotten. Germany has had many wars, but the music of Joseph Hayden lives on forever. So let me ask you again, what is it that's valuable to you? Bernard Tristan once won a newspaper competition by providing the best answer to this question. If a fire broke out in the Louvre and you could save only one painting, which would it be? And his reply was, the one nearest the exit. Can you not sympathise with that? What is it that's of value in life? Is it paintings or is it people? Jesus said, that the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he went and sold all that he had and bought that field. The kingdom of heaven, he added, is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all he had and bought it. In other words, what Jesus is saying to us this morning is, No matter how glamorous you might be, no matter how high your IQ might be, if you've missed out on the kingdom of heaven, then you've missed out on the one thing in life whose value exceeds all others. So what can we say this morning about the kingdom of heaven? Well, I have to say, by the way, that the terms kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are really considered by scholars to be interchangeable. It may be that Matthew was hesitant to write the name God for fear of violating the holiness of God's name and so he used the term Kingdom of Heaven. What is this kingdom that Jesus spent his ministry proclaiming? Well, the first thing I want to say to you this morning is that the Kingdom of Heaven is a present reality. It's not something in the far off future. It's something that's with us in the here and now. One prominent Bible scholar estimates that of the 27 references to the Kingdom of God or the Kingdom of Heaven in primary sources, 18 of them imply that the Kingdom is already here. Here's what some people miss. Too often we come to Jesus and we make a commitment to him, we serve him, but then we put our spiritual development on hold And we wait until that day when we enter these pearly gates in the world to come. That's a mistake. Because the kingdom of heaven is not about the future. The kingdom of heaven is about the here and now. Wherever God is, there is heaven. But heaven's not a distant dream. It's a present reality. The kingdom of God is the kingly rule of God in the hearts of all believers. Do you ever wonder why there are so many doer Christians? Have we not seen? Have we not heard? 
The kingdom of God is available to us here and now. And yet some of us are like the old farmer who always complains about the insects or the weather or the low price that he gets at the market. And then finally the year comes when all the conditions are right and he brings in a bumper crop. Well, says his friend, you've made it now. And the farmer says, well, you have to understand a harvest like this is pretty hard on the soil. You simply can't please some people. They will never be satisfied. But the kingdom of God is a present reality. It's available here and now to anyone who receives it. And maybe there's another thing that we need to remember. And that is that the kingdom of God is like a precious relationship. Let me tell you a wee story that I found on the internet when I was trying to research a story that talked a bit about belonging because that's what the kingdom of God is. It's about belonging to the kingdom. It's about sharing with other people. It's a kind of sad story, but it illustrates the point that I'm trying to make. It's a story about a wee boy who was on a bus And he was huddled close to a lady and he was swinging his leg out into the aisle. You know the way that wee boys do. And he accidentally rubbed his shoe against the woman who was sitting on the passage across from him. And so this woman was pretty irate. And so she said to the woman that the boy was sitting beside, please can you tell your boy to remove his dirty feet from the seat? And the woman turned round and she said, he's not my boy. I don't know who that boy is. And so the embarrassed the wee boy moved and slunk down the seat as if to hide from view. I'm sorry, he said to the lady, I didn't mean to soil your dress. But the lady was no longer angry, angry because she said, are you on this bus on your own? And he said, yes, I always travel on my own. My mum and dad are both dead and I live with my aunt and sometimes she gets tired of me and she sends me to another aunt. And so the woman said, Are you on, you're on your way to your other aunts now? And he said, yes, I'm on my way to my other aunts now. He said, but sometimes I feel quite lonely. And so when I see someone I'd like to belong to, I sit close to them on the bus and I pretend that they're my family. And I'm sorry, that's what I was doing when I got your dress dirty. Isn't that the greatest need that all of us have? The need to belong. Well, let me tell you this morning, we belong to the kingdom of heaven. Heaven isn't just jasper walls and streets of gold. Heaven is being in the presence of God and in the presence of the people that we love. I actually think that our church is a little slice of heaven because our church is a little slice of the kingdom of God. And yet the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God that we experience in this world is just a foretaste of the kingdom that is to come because there is a city whose builder and maker is God. And so the kingdom of heaven is not just present but it is also future. And that's why Jesus taught us to pray and say, Thy kingdom come. God will bring in his kingdom someday. But in the meantime, however, He's calling us to prepare the way that in the midst of this important task we have, it's a peril of great price for which a merchant will sell everything he owns. Amen. Let's come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, words cannot express how thankful we are that you consider us to be your children your treasure, your peril beyond all price. And words cannot express how grateful we are that nothing can ever separate us from your love. And so, Lord, we pray this day for all who are yet to hear this news. May you continue to sustain all who seek to make you known across our world. Be in all that opens people's eyes to you, to your love and to your call. God of love and compassion, we pray for all who seek to make a difference in the lives of others. Be with carers and counsellors, medics and mediators. Be with those with listening ears and those with caring hands. Be in all that opens people's eyes to you. 
God of justice and peace, we pray for all who seek to challenge injustices and stand up for what is right. So we pray that you will be with the politicians and the protesters, the activists and the pacifists, the vocal and the silent, be in all that opens people's eyes to you. Lord, as we come to you this day, we all have concerns on our mind. We have concerns about ourselves, those that we love, those that we share our lives with, concerns about our communities, concerns about our world, but in confidence, we lay them all before you now. So hear us and help us to see you this day. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is For My Sake and the Gospels Go. peace to love and serve the Lord and may the blessings of God Almighty Father Son and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore Amen
Once again, thanks for joining with us this morning. I hope you have a good week ahead. I hope the weather gets a bit better as the week goes on. But remember, you can join us for a Zoom coffee. The code is at the bottom of your screen, quarter to 12 to quarter to one. And we'd love to see you there.